Let's get through this real quick. I assume if you're watching this, then you've already seen my absolutely insane theory on Gary the Snail from SpongeBob SquarePants. He's a four-dimensional Illuminati occultist dolphin. I will link the first two-thirds of this now three-parter above, because everyone, guess what? I'm stupid. I am, in particular, very stupid indeed. I always planned the three-parter for Gary. I've talked about this, remember? Mrs. Puff got three parts, Patrick three parts. Anytime there's a particularly interesting lead I found with Spongebob, I hit them with a three-parter. But the reason I'm stupid is because I left a huge chunk out of part two that was supposed to be there. It was to be the final and rather obvious puzzle piece. Luckily, I've saved it for here because Gary and the Observers created humanity. Hello, theorizer is me. Before I finish all of this off with the uh, panspermia theory I've concocted, there were a few final questions I got on part two that would be criminal to avoid. One involves Patchy the Pirate's dimension, one involves Doodlebob's dimension, and one involves a comment that finally explained to me why I'm so stupid. How I basically proved something so near undeniable without saying or remembering I'd pondered and used it as a basis in some ways. First. Patchy. So Patchy seems to be in some sort of alternate dimension in which the Illuminati televises Spongebob. That, or he is the representation of us, the spatially 5D or higher. He's an obsessive fan, but he's definitely above Spongebob in terms of obvious dimensionality. I have an excellent metaphor I've come up with when pondering all of this. Well, not really excellent, but for those who've seen those videos on the fourth spatial dimension, it's odd. It's sort of like 4D shapes are at a cross-section in our dimension, but here's an interesting uh, sort of way to think about it. 3D characters on televisions. They rotate and look like they're in a 3D environment, even though the picture's 2D, but then there's us watching said 3D environment, still from above, from behind the TV. There's a really neat way to think of 3D cross-sections, and unfortunately that's the best conceptual way to think about it here, no matter how human and limited I truly sound in saying that. As for Doodlebob, he's simply two-dimensional. I was cautious about branding Bikini Bottom as full-on 2D for the sheer reason that the characters sort of, well, they don't act 2D. Doodlebob, though, more so does, even though he still exists in this slightly more open world. I got a lot of comments also commenting on something that didn't have any weight on my theory as a whole, but I brought it up and sort of got it 50% wrong when explaining. That being... Gary's dad. I said based on the family tree, it's more likely it would show a mother here. I said this because yes, I know snails can be asexual, but so can many other creatures on this tree, including Patrick, as I've proven, and they didn't show signs of asexuality here. It's inconsistent, so I ended up going with the local pattern on the tree, which had otherwise shown two parents no matter what. Again, the point was that he had a relation to Patrick. That was just a neat thing I mentioned. His relation has basically no weight on the theory overall, and Gary's dad being the only one present had literally zero weight on the theory, but I just wanted to clarify. Okay, time for the theory to evolve, starting with the biggest slap to the face I've received with these Spongebob theories henceforth. I've made theories before where I've stated so much and constantly danced around a single fundamental shocking secret without even noticing it. This happened again. True or not, I feel dumb for not mentioning it. I feel so, 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 so stupid. And there were actually a couple of people who commented about this, but Gary is Bubbles. His voice is a mental recreation of what he remembers himself to sound like. Bubbles didn't want to retire and have the Gary life. He already did it. After the film, the dejected Bubbles time travels back and becomes our exiled mollusk, so he can slowly assimilate and forget the pains of 10,000 years rejection. The higher-ups Bubbles refers to does mean there's still this whole race of 4D sea creatures, but Bubbles became the snail we know and love. The one we see with the shell in this nebula, Gary. I also saw a fish here, but you know, this is still all sort of subjective and I, I don't like using this nebula as much evidence. And as amazing as it is, if Bubbles is Gary, I do foresee some complications with such an idea. From what I remember, I might have actually pondered this before, but cut it for its inability to properly fit. And I straight up forgot about it until it was brought up to me again, but it's still so fascinating and amazing enough to mention. I don't know if I'd fit it into my main theory, but the complications and likewise the Solutions I will allow to be debated in the comments section, so please do. So that's all a little step towards more brainstorming, but now comes my theory. The part that I completely forgot to mention. I believe 
this alien race is not just responsible for Bikini Bottom. I made that whole part two so I could build to this point, and then I forgot to say it. The aliens created humanity as well. It's implied everywhere. They watch over and protect us. What are we, some random creatures on some random planet they view? No, we are the idyllic pet project. Cellular evolution, consciousness, so on, so forth, the whole nine yards. The humans in SpongeBob exist because of the dolphins. It's no different than their creation of Bikini Bottom. It's obvious. The magical book. Do I have to spell it out? It's the Bible of Bikini Bottom, a prophetic origin story detailing SpongeBob meeting his makers. It's the purpose of Sponge out of water. It's the dolphins' book. They created Bikini Bottom. It's a proxy for the Bible, which evidently implies there's more than just one level of similarity. We, the viewers, are the 5D hands. As I said at the end of part two, you have Doodle Bob's dimension, the second. Bikini Bottom is an interim dimension between the second and the third, the third being the humans we see in Sponge Out of Water. Patchy is somewhere higher or in an alternate dimension, but Bubbles is the fourth, and we are the one above all. So much is done for comedic effect but it has implications in the lore which itself is confusingly selectively canon. It's an interim dimension of cartoon physics. In the first movie, they don't fully fade into the third dimension when on land because they are near water almost the whole time. They dry up but are still not fully immersed. This is also proven by how the undead pufferfish and other hut animals are magically revived with water after being dead so long. They're not real pufferfish, they are bikini bottomites, sub-dimensional aliens to us. This is all so amazing. So fantastic and so perfect. I love doing this so much, so I went back and watched a few more episodes of Spongebob. And then I screamed. My jaw dropped and my heart skipped a beat, dilating my pupils out of unadulterated existential terror. The pure mind f**kery of what I witnessed will blow you to bits. Holy bubbles. That is the realization. Holy bubbles. In the corner of a shot, in the episode Goodbye Krabby Patty, we bear witness to a recreation of Michelangelo's famous Adam painting in which God is replaced with a dolphin. This is the evidence. The smoking gun, the nail in the coffin, this whole time. It's pretty easy to convince you all that Bubbles is an alien. There are clear signs everywhere. It's actually hard to debunk it. But it's harder to convince you that these same aliens are the humans' gods in film. Because they show no signs of mentoring or creating humanity until now. This is a human painting. This art parody, which has been slipped in by the animators, is canonical proof that dolphins in Spongebob are not only intelligent aliens, but actual representations of divinity. Gary is not a god, he's the god. <laughs> they called me crazy. A madman maniac out of his depth. This is nothing. I analyzed Andrew Stanton's tweet and stretched it over 10 minutes. I spent 12 weeks analyzing the dentist from Nemo and fit it into a three-hour video all to prove Darla's parents were divorced. I've spent hours calculating the mathematics and stitching together family trees and timelines unrivaled in their meticulousness. I calculated the weight of Chantelle Dubois so I could call her an absolute unit. 